As always, check out my book, and down below there's a link, but NV Tiny House Heaters, we have another video featuring them coming up very soon. They are ideal for your tiny house. And check out the ever-awesome Tiny House magazine in the description below. So this is something I designed for a workshop fully hands-on that took place about a year ago with students that were absolute rookies. We built this in two days, and I can tell you a little bit about what the design entails and why we built it. What's up guys, DeekRelaxTracks.com. Just a little progress and something we're working out here in the woods. There's Jeremy Clemens in the background. Where is he? There he is. And way in the background. We're actually wrapping up the workshop. A couple of people hanging out, taking a break. We're working on kind of this prefabricated panelized cabin behind us so that you can build things in eight by eight chunks, put them on a trailer or smaller chunks and assemble a very affordable cabin. Trying it out here in Regalwood, North Carolina. Eventually down the road, perhaps in Stephen Harrell's channel, that's uh, Tiny House Listings, tinyhouselistings.com as well, you will see the final product of this. But this, this is, uh, I can't talk, I'm very tired. This is kind of a sneak peek of what we've been working on with some new Tough Text product back there. It's a double wall kind of greenhouse poly walls right there, which we're loving, it's lightweight, and this is all kind of a gridded panelized system yet again. We're going up quite a bit taller than this. That wall in the front's eight by eight. We're gonna have plans for this eventually on relaxjacks.com. Depending on when you're looking at this, maybe they're out already. Maybe I've died of old age, who knows? Uh, obviously window, doorway. I kind of drafted the plans and a lot of the students have been building a good majority of this. I'm letting them make their mistakes and learn from them. Got these hands-on workshops. Got another one coming up in California. Outside Joshua Tree, where we're building something very different. You would roast if you built something like this in Joshua Tree. Uh, but this is only eight by eight inside. It's gonna feel huge because we're going up with more prefabricated panels, yet another 10 feet up this way with a cool swinging window in the front. Close up this Tough Tech stuff. I'm loving it, been using it a lot lately in an art studio I'm building. There's another panelized piece in the back. See right back there, I heard a bunch of like legs bumping and screams. So just a couple of other shots to clarify, point out some things. The front of this, of course, you can get a lot of natural solar gain. You can see the diagonal supports in there to brace things because without that, without any triangulation, this wouldn't be so rigid structurally. I mentioned earlier in the text, I probably side this with shingles. You could also almost triple coat or paint it with exterior paint, good exterior paint to kind of button it up. Same with the corners, haven't put the corner trim on in these photos as of yet. But once you paint, stain, or side this and then light it up from inside, it's going to look pretty darn cool. And the interior, because it's so tall, kind of tricks you into thinking the space is a, well, a heck of a lot bigger than it really is. There's a loft up there that's a little over four feet in width. You could ascend to or get up to with a simple galley-style ladder. A lot of natural light. People are going to, of course, in the comments say, what about privacy? You're living in a box or it's a giant see-through outhouse. Uh, of course, you could put curtains covering things up there as well. There's some ventilation up near the top. You could add another window up higher as well. There are two windows down below and a framed in door. We had a shortage of lumber, so we kind of framed these cheater style, I like to call it, shed style, 
without the proper jack studs, but it's a small structure, so it's going to work just fine. And it's very boxy in appearance, but very modern and simple at the same time. And the idea was to come up with a plan that just about anybody could tackle or afford because we're seeing too many plan sets and getaway cabin plans out there that are just far too expensive. And the floor plan, again, is only 8 by 8 feet, but you still could fit a little kitchenette in there, a sitting, a dining space. And because you're sleeping up above, you're saving all that floor space down below, as with any tiny house. Double top plates uh, on both ends for strength as well. And like I said, you'll be seeing much more of this down the road as they were around. Here's the cabin I sat in last night. So my book, right, right there. It's weird doing this in reverse. My book, Micro, uh, Micro Living, has this little cabin when it was first built in it. It's called The Cheer Stand, built by Stephen Harrell, again, of Tiny House Listings. Check out his channel. We'll put a link down below. Subscribe to his channel. It's fantastic. And there's a couple other things in the woods as I spin around again. Uh, tree house hidden back there we built with students years ago at a workshop and somewhere way way back there I'm too lazy it's very we had a lot of rain so it's pretty swampy here but way back there another cabin we built with a hands-on workshop so come out to these they are a lot of fun you'll meet some great people and maybe consider joining us for another workshop in May out near 29 Palms Joshua Tree uh, California gonna be a lot of fun hands-on as always and thanks for watching